The other subject for San Diego State sports fans is Aztec basketball. Uh, coming off a really impressive, good, solid weekend in Vegas. I was there at T-Mobile Arena, Aztecs playing in the main event, and winning two games against good, good, solid programs. First of all, St. Mary's, they're on hard times a little bit. They've lost three consecutive games. Weber stayed at home. Uh, Brian Dutcher expecting them to play angry on Friday night, and the Aztecs took a good punch from St. Mary's before uh, really dominating the second half, outscoring St. Mary's 45-21. And then Sunday night was one of the epic all-time regular season games for the Aztecs over the last 25 years. San Diego State building a 12-point lead against the University of Washington with four minutes to play, only to see the Huskies come all the way back and tie it at the free throw line with one second left after actually missing one of two free throws. Otherwise, they win the game. Jane Ledee, it would have been late, but nearly threw a ball in from near half court at the buzzer of regulation. Then Washington, with all that momentum, coming back from 12 down in the final four minutes, turning San Diego State over a couple of times, took a four-point lead in overtime, and San Diego State still won the game. Jane Ledee, clutch moment after clutch moment. Lamont Butler, a timely three. Lamont Butler, a timely steal. And the Aztecs somehow found a way to win. There was a corner three at the buzzer of overtime. It was off the front of the rim. And the Aztecs won it 100 to 97 to get to four and one. They've got good wins. They've got a resume that they had worked hard at in the offseason to give themselves a, uh, the ability to build a resume where you're playing a Long Beach State team that's already beaten Michigan and DePaul on the road. St. Mary's preseason, um, preseason favorite in the WCC. Washington with like an NBA-style offense and a couple of NBA players on their team. They have to be top half in the Pac-12 after watching on Sunday night. Cal State Fullerton, I think, is going to be a good team in the Big West. Aztecs get Cal. Cal's been a little disappointing here. They have a ton of transfers. They've had some injuries. Aztecs get Cal Saturday in San Juan Capistrano. They still have Stanford at home. They still have Grand Canyon on the road, which could potentially be a quad one opportunity. They're inside the top 75 of Kempom right now. I think UC San Diego on the road is not exactly a walk in the park. Um, they have Gonzaga on the road, which is, you know, as good of an opportunity as you can possibly ask for, but you don't hurt yourself if you don't win the game. And right now, out of teams in the top 40 in Kempom, the toughest non-conference schedule in the country is San Diego State's. So you, you can't ask for more what the Aztecs have shown you right now. And don't get me started on polling. Just don't get me started on polling. The Aztecs a week ago dropping out after losing at BYU, yet other programs like Michigan State, a home loss to JMU, um, FAU, a home loss to Bryant. And there are others that I'm missing. Staying, oh, the USC, a home loss to UC Irvine. Those teams have stayed inside the top 25. The Aztecs have the best loss of that group, and they're outside the top 25. And they have the toughest schedule of that group. And for whatever reason, East Coast bias, no respect for San Diego State, whatever it is, pollsters having no clue, um, whatever it is, San Diego State just doesn't get that national respect. And at the end of the day, Brian Dutcher really doesn't care. I mean, they don't build that schedule to be in the top 25. They build that schedule to give themselves a resume that will look good with the selection committee come NCAA tournament time, whether they win the Mountain West tournament or not. And a schedule like that, non-conference, you're – potentially giving yourself a position to play up a seed line or two or three based on your results. And that stuff matters. Last year, San Diego State was a five seed. Do they make the same run as a six seed? We'll never know. Um, but they played a challenging non-conference schedule and they benefited from that. And they were rewarded with a number five seed in the NCAA tournament. And I think they could be rewarded again this year if they take advantage of this non-conference schedule. And so far, so good. And there's still, again, a lot of opportunities a lot can happen. I think the Mountain West is going to be good like it's been the last couple of years, whether it's Boise State, Colorado State with Stevens back, New Mexico with Jalen House, still not healthy, but coming back from injury. So the Mountain West has a chance to certainly send three-plus teams to the NCAA tournament. They've done it each of the last two years. Four teams got in two years ago. Four teams got in last year. San Diego State made that run all the way to the national championship game. And then, oh, by the way, there was Jaden Ledee who is playing as well as any player in the country. And I think that's inarguable. He's the national player of the week, according to multiple publications. He did something on Sunday that no player in the history of the Mountain West Conference in 26 years has ever done. 34 points or more, 17 rebounds or more, shooting 50% or better from the floor. He's the only player in the history of the conference to do that. He leads the nation in points per game. He leads the nation in points per game with the schedule that they've played. I mean, they're not playing 
you know, non D1 opponents right now. They're not playing 300 or lower in the net. They're playing top 100 caliber teams. He's facing off against legitimate centers like Traore at BYU, like the Traores against Long Beach State, um, like the two seven footers that uh, Washington had, like the two seven footers that St. Mary's had. Like he's not bothered by size. He's so physical, he's so broad. And if you watch the NCAA tournament last year when he was going up against guys like uh, Charles Bediaco at Alabama, Ryan Kalkbrenner at Creighton, the Russian center at FAU, uh, Sonogo Klingon at UConn, right? Um, think about that. I mean, he, he's facing 7'4 seven, centers, 7'2 seven, centers, and holding his own. This was a year ago. And now he's just completely come into his own, just completely, where he's playing like an All-American. He's playing like a Mountain West Player of the Year. He's playing like someone that um, – is motivated to not just perform for himself, but for his team and to win at a high level. That That's what I'm seeing right now. And I know it's November 21st. It's not March 21st. And that's, I think, what's actually exciting for Aztec fans. Like, think about the potential growth in his game still. And are you going to count Jaden Ledee out in, like, a tournament setting? I'm not. Matt West tournament, NCAA tournament. Like, are you going to bet against Jaden Ledee based on what you've seen over these five games? And then, oh, by the way, You've got this veteran core around him, Lamont, Darion, Micah, the addition of Reese Waters, who has fit in beautifully to this offense and has played really good defense as well. The emergence of Elijah Saunders, the return of Miles Bird. I think Jay Powell is just scratching the surface of what he's going to do for the Aztecs as he learns this system. And I think we saw a little bit of that on Sunday against Washington in Vegas. So there's just a ton to like, and I, I've been saying over the last couple of days, it feels as if San Diego State is further along today than they were a year ago today, and that team made a national championship game. And I'm not saying that this team is going to make a national championship game, so don't put those words in my mouth, but because it's hard, and we know that all kinds of crazy things happen. Look at Purdue last year. Look at Virginia the year before they won a national championship. You can't predict it. That's why they call it March Madness. But you know, a year ago, coming off Maui, some of the early season struggles, they really got it going in the second half of the year, and they fully turned it on, I think, in February and March. That's when you really saw the best of the Aztecs, and typically under Brian Dutcher, his teams will play its best basketball in February and March, which is a credit to Brian Dutcher and his coaching staff. What's happening right now is you've got this team playing really good basketball, specifically on offense. You're, you're talking about a top 25 efficient offense and a top 25 efficient defense. The only team in the country that has a top 25 offense and a top 100 schedule per Ken Palm. Oh, by the way, also the only team in the country with a top 25 defense and a top 100 schedule. And they got both. And they're the only team with either. And they have both. So it's hard to discredit the accomplishments of the team. Yeah, they got the BYU loss. Well, they don't win at BYU. They're four and thirty-one. It was their second game. Give BYU credit. They're top fifteen right now in Ken Palm. Um, and it's not. I'm not saying that you know BYU is going to be a one-off and they're not going to lose again. There's tough games in there. Gonzaga is tough. Some of these games in the non-conference are tough. They could be tripped up. And the conference they'll have a bullseye. Obviously, defending Mountain West champs, playing in a Final Four, first program in the history of, of the league to do that. So it, it's not like it's going to be a walk in the park, but I think when dust settles, you have to like the makeup of this team. And it's a lot different than last year's team. Um, it is. It's just a, it's a lot different. You don't have Nathan Mensa. You don't have, um, you know, the everything ability of a Gwuka Rope. You don't have Keisha Johnson. Like, you've lost a lot. Adam Seiko, um, you know, Matt Bradley. You've lost a lot. Make no mistake, but you've added. I mean, you're seeing Jaden Ledee, the offense run through him. He's a completely different player, and he was a great player a year ago. Reese Waters, you know, is playing with an all-Mountain West caliber player. Elijah Saunders, we didn't see much last year. Um, he's been lethal to start the year from beyond the arc. He's been a huge difference maker for this team. We've seen improvement from Micah Parrish. Darion Trammell hasn't even been fully healthy. Missed three-plus weeks with that shoulder. Um, the Aztecs aren't even fully healthy right now. Miles Bird coming back from injury. Demarche Johnson Jr. coming back from injury. Um, but I just think it's really encouraging. It really is encouraging. Um, if you've been watching these first handful of games, um, it's been very, very encouraging.